It's October 2010. After five years of preparation and anticipation, the third Lausanne Congress on World Evangelization has arrived, as have four and a half thousand Christian leaders from across the world. I come from uh, Hong Kong. Coming from Montenegro. I'm from India. From Nigeria. US, from the state of Iowa. I'm excited about the conference because I think it's uh, going to be a watershed for evangelism. Exciting because to connect with so many Christian leaders. I'm amazed at how many people are represented here from my, how many countries. From different nations, different tongues, but knowing that we have the same father. Experiencing uh, people from all around the world is very exciting. I'm here to discover what God is doing all over the world. Coming together under one particular purpose, and that is uh, exemplified through the uh, Congress verse, God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. We have come to dream. In those days, the prophet Joel said, when I pour out my spirit, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. We believe that the future is as bright as the promises of God. One of the features of the Congress is the number of people who are coming from the southern part of the world, uh, non-Westerners. Today is a case of missions being sent from everywhere to everywhere. But one delegation from the global church is missing. Throughout most of the 20th century, the Chinese church has exploded in numbers despite the tensions and challenges it has faced over the last hundred years. 200 delegates were planning to attend the Congress, but no one was able to leave the country demonstrating that the mission of the church faces a variety of challenges on its many frontiers. Although the absence of the Chinese is keenly felt, those thousands of church leaders who have arrived from across the world are excited by the opportunity to gather as a global community. We are seated in the heavenly places in Christ. We are no longer aliens but the children of God. We're dealing two days each with the whole church, the whole gospel, the whole world. In this case, the first two days are dedicated to the whole gospel. Jesus is the truth by his transformative power in our life. In Asia, as much as it is in the West, that people believe that, you see, truth is relative. What is true to you may not be true to me. We're soft on truth. We're not faithful to the gospel. And we're courting decline. The biblical view is profound, timely, and urgent for today. Most importantly, Jesus is truth in person. I'm really being equipped, empowered, inspired, moved by the presentations. And it's only day one. Yes, it's only day one. It's going to get better. And then the next day, with dealing with developing a theology of reconciliation. Our world seems caught up in a tidal wave of racial and ethnic tension. Go visit Bethlehem, uh, come visit Nazareth. As a Palestinian, it's very difficult to reach to my enemy. But as a Christian Palestinian, I have the ability to do that. Well, our country went through a genocide that took a million people in a hundred days. We have to figure out a way how the gospel of the kingdom that we bring in word, also in practice, unites people. When Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs can say to one another, I love you in Jesus' name, the world will see the powerful reconciliation work of the good news. And so, my brothers and my sisters, as evangelical Christians, we have got to demonstrate the credibility of the gospel by the way we live and what we model of the truth. In my work with International Justice Mission, I free slaves and work to restore them to a life of dignity. I think it was a great session. A message of reconciliation is very necessary. Be rekindled again to go back 
and do the work of reconciliation. We've divided everybody up into small groups of six at tables where each day they discuss the issues of the day. By diffusing them into small groups, the Holy Spirit had an opportunity to work in their hearts. And many, many stories of God touching people's hearts, making them more tender, making them more open, more vulnerable, and willing to learn from others. Sitting there by the table with five other people from different parts of the world and immediately feeling the warmth. They are my fellow Christians. Well, uh, the speakers have put a lot of work into it, but it's an inductive style, which means that the participants have got to do some of their own reflection and application. In my own table, having people from uh, uh, Japan and China and also the US and Europe, here we had the West and the East dialoguing together on world global issues. On the third day, we moved from the matter of the gospel to the matter of the world, and we dealt with people of other faiths. It is maybe a sad reflection that for some of us, we spend our lives looking for models of evangelism and discipleship that cost nothing. But such a gospel would not be recognized by the early apostles as a genuine gospel. I am from Eritrea, a country in East Africa, where persecution is very severe right now. The church leaders, most of them, they are in jail. Over 40 people came to my house to kill me and they met my wife. They did unspeakable things to her. Exactly one year later, they came back again. This time they met me at home. God has chosen that some of his servants be imprisoned as a way of bringing about his cosmic purpose. Verse 1, verse 13. I was born in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. There my parents came to know the amazing grace and love of God. My father was sentenced to prison. It breaks my heart to tell you that I have heard no word from my father nor about him ever since. In all probability, he has been shot to death in public on charges of treason in North Korea. There are truly no closed countries to the gospel. And there are laws, if you say something against the prophet, uh, you can be put in jail and hanged. Uh. There are only places where we are not prepared to stand up for the gospel. To remember that the gospel is worth dying for, that Jesus is real, and that we can take him to places where people are afraid to go. I'm really excited as we begin the second half of this great Congress, because today we're going to be asked to make the commitments that may be life-changing for each of us. In terms of world evangelization today, we need to ask this question, where is the church not? Where is the church not present, and what are we going to do about it? The next two days, we'll deal with the church, a prophetic critique of the church. There are self-appointed super apostles and mighty elevated leaders, unaccountable to anybody else. That's the idolatry of pride and power. Calling the church to a, a 21st century reformation, to authenticity, which would be characterized by humility and integrity and simplicity. And there is a craze for success and for results and obsession with statistics and outcomes. That's the idolatry of success. And then there's the so-called prosperity gospel. This gospel makes the pursuit of material things end in themselves. I suggest that in whatever way we ourselves have aligned with this gospel, we need to repent. But God, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Salvation is all of God, and the result is glory to God. It's based on what Christ has done, 
not our doing. We wanted to uphold the value and the treasure of the scripture in every way possible and motivate the global church to really embrace the scripture and take it in mission at every level. This passage invites us to consider how that cosmic rain is made visible in daily, tangible, breathing human life. Our goals uh, were first to create a space where we could hear from God together, uh, particularly through Ephesians. We are a new creation. We live a life of fullness in the spirit of the living God. Therefore, let us truly walk as a different people in the world today. For thus we have been called. One of the objectives of the Congress is to make a very clear statement about evangelical convictions and beliefs entitled the Cape Town Commitment. Uh, a series of evangelical affirmations, what we believe, followed by a call to evangelical action. Here's what we are, this is what we believe as Christians, and these are the implications. But it also tries to say, what are the priorities for Christian mission in the 21st century that we as the Christian Church should be addressing? But the fresh commitment to evangelism has already begun. Inspired by the coming of Cape Town 2010, Mission Africa has already been spreading across the continent. Mission Africa is a vision which became born through a number of us thinking about what should precede the Congress and what might flow out from it so that the Congress wasn't just an isolated event but was part of a whole evangelistic uh, thrust and process. We're out in the marshalling yard behind the the area where the plenary sessions take place. And it's a gathering of mobile trailers, the uh, television production truck, and uh, a lot of people that most never see who are working uh, early and late to bring all these parts together to uh, produce the final product that's shown around the rest of the world. Greetings from Elmbrook Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Welcome to Gloucester in the United Kingdom. We're thrilled to be one of 700 global link sites connecting with Cape Town 2010. Today we feel a great joy and privilege that after such a long time of isolation, we are now able to participate in this Congress. We have a huge task before us to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth, and we can only do it if we do it together, using all the gifts that God has given to men and to women. I think many, many are excited about going back and really going to live for Christ and going to witness for Christ. All Christians believe in the gospel, but not all Christians believe in the urgency of the gospel. If you want human life as it is lived in this world to be shaped at all by Jesus Christ, you have to, we have to go to the city. As you seek to bear witness to Christ, with God's help, Wesley wrote, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can, till Christ takes you home. God bless you.